Hey guys, today we are painting up this guy right here. So that's going to be what's on the easel today. And we painted this as an 8x10 gesso board panel, cradle gesso board panel with a wicked ground coat. No name paints from there. And uh, yeah, we're going to roll right on into this tutorial. Let's get busy and learn something. I began this painting with an 8x10 gesso board panel in which I coated with some wicked paint as my ground coat. And then as you see, I cut out a stencil out of a, my reference, and you can see I cut them little holes in there, and then that's how I attached it to my surface. Now, the color I'm spraying in the background, as I showed you in, in the cup, it is orange and black mixed together, which makes a very, very dark brown. In no point am I spraying black directly on this panel because we have colors in the black would kind of clash with them orangey tones. So... As I'm spraying in the eye sockets, you'll notice that I am staying a little bit away from the edges of my cuts because I want them to be a little bit more rounded. If you came in here and just really filled that in dark and black, then it would be difficult to round that off later. You can, but it just creates unnecessary work in the future. So in some of those spots, I have just put tiny little holes in there, tiny little slits and cuts in the paper that I can spray through to give me some reference marks. And in the case here on the inside of the mouth, I'm going to go ahead and spray up tight to everything because everything there will get a nice crisp edge. So it's a little bit different than the way I treated the eye sockets. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my little electric eraser. That's a rechargeable electric eraser. Cut that little section of the um, septum that exists inside the nose. So I'm going to work on the teeth. And the teeth are going to be one of the more tedious parts. So as you can see, I cut my stencil, paper stencil, and I cut the right hand side set of teeth. Those are a little bit more in the background. And I'll zoom in here in a moment so you can see these a little crisper. And I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling out the brighter sections. So I'm cutting back through that yellow base layer and getting all the way back, almost back to white there. Now I'm taking a sepia tone and I'm taking that sepia tone and going to fill in between each one of those teeth. Remember, teeth are, are basically an upside-down cone, sort of, stuck inside a socket when they're in a skull like that. And just remember that that's the same as your cone shape, just upside-down. Remember where your light's coming from. Our light, in this particular case, is coming from the right-hand side of your screen across or on the left-hand side of the skull's head. So what I'm going to do is cut each one of those teeth on the other three. I will cut each section off of it. And that way I can get a nice crisp line off the left side and then just create that blend off of there. I'm also going to fill in these little cavity marks in there off the top. And I'm going to do that with each one of those teeth. And then I'm going to take an eraser and pull it back so that I'm pulling that brown back out of it and pulling that paint all the way back to that white of that gesso. It's the only place in this painting that we go all the way back to a white surface, which is not quite literally completely white anyway. Now, while you're watching me put these teeth in, I'm going to talk about how the difference in that ground coat. So since Wicked's a very durable paint, it is going to be very hard to erase back through. And then I am painting this with the no-name airbrush paints, which are a little more erasable. So at any point, my lightest color, with the exception of this little section on the teeth where I got real aggressive with the erasing, I'll never come back to the white of that gesso. That gives me that ground coat as my base layer. and It creates a nice warm tone that I can work off of. As you can see, I use my electric eraser for a sharp highlight, and then I use the back side of one of them stick-on erasers to go on a pencil to gently pull that paint back out and create a nice, more rounded tone so that we're not too crisp and too sharp off them teeth there. And we're going to continue our teeth much on the same on the left hand side and we're going to use the paper as we tear the paper to create those crisp and sharp lines that way we can spray off of them we spray on the paper and just let those tiny little spots fall off hey i'm using my hand to protect the teeth there is what i'm doing because i'm doing a little bit of splatter effect that's where you um 
let some paint get on the needle and then just blast it off. So you pull back for paint without air and then hit the air so it splatters those little big those dots right there and gets multiple dots at different sizes. I'll add some more naturally and with the paint with the airbrush as well as you know with stencils later. Now what I've done there is that is a piece of paper that I took my exacto knife and just twisted my exacto knife on the point up against the table to cut some really small holes. Those holes will be smaller than about any dot stencil that I can think of that you can buy on the market. And plus it costs nothing. It's really easy. And you can see there as we get close what kind of effect that creates. Those really tiny, tiny dots. Now I'm using a sepia tone. I'm using the no-name brand of airbrush paints as I mentioned. So I'm using sepia and I'm just a little bit reduced down and I'm going to continue to build these tones as we work. So the only colors that will go in this entire painting other than my ground panel, I will use the sepia tone for most of my work. I'm going to glaze some red over it at some point. You'll see that when I get to it. And I am going to use the orange and brown mixture together to make that darkest color. I also would like to point out that I'm sure you saw I used a texture stencil. It's a dot stencil that I used for some bigger dots in there as I needed to. And so now what I'm doing is I'm kind of I'm rounding everything off and creating some dimension using that sepia tone and then i'm going to come in this is a rechargeable electric eraser with a small tip on it right now of course you can do this with a pencil eraser or so on but this makes really really quick work of it and that's the way i wanted to go so i'm not just erasing on there like i'm picking it up kind of tapping it so i get those tiny little dots and stuff in there and some places I'll drag into it a little bit, but mostly I'm just touching it in multiple spots so you get a whole lot of those different textures. Now, you can see the pencil eraser that, you know, the cheapest you can get, the, I buy them in like a 10 pack on the back side of a pencil and coming in and pulling out some highlights there. And that'll create a more gentle erasing now I've come back, I took some just plain red and I glazed over it and I'm gonna take most of that red back out. So I'm gonna work continuing to put dots in here, but then I'm gonna come back with my eraser. I'm gonna use my pencil eraser like in little circles as I go through here and I'm pulling that red out. So it's going to leave just a little bit of that warm red tone underneath. And I may have gone a little too overboard with the red, but knowing I could pull that out pretty quickly, I was not worried about it. It is important to note though, if you're going to be working on a painting for a long time, only put enough paint that you can work on it within you know the next hour or so. Since I was painting this whole thing in about two to three hours total, I wasn't worried about that, so I will cover a lot of ground. And of course, use my stencil, create that sharp edge off of the zygomatic bone over there on the right hand side, and then you'll see how I created that crisper edge at the rest of that socket coming in on that the left eye socket or the one on your right so i'm working as i mentioned i work with that sepia tone first instead of going directly into that dark tone and that allows you to work much slower so we, if we make any mistakes, it's really easy to correct if, and erase them out if we haven't gone, you know, really, really dark in there. And if you come in with your darkest mix and try to blend that out, one, it's hard to control a really, really dark mix of paint. And two, if you make mistakes with that really dark mix of paint, it's really, really difficult to fix them or correct them. So as you can see, I'm using the dot stencil a lot. So in some of them spots, I'm pulling that stencil off of the surface. So I'm actually got the stencil like a half inch off the surface, spraying through it and just creates a very diffuse type of texture. And then some places I'm putting it down where I want them dots to show through or to be very, very tight and small. Now, when I get up to them dots that I really want to find, of course, then I'm laying my stencil in there tight, which is going to happen a lot on the maxilla, as well as, you know, a few spots around the nose bridge and on the forehead. 
So I'm gonna to continue to work with this mix here. Now, you're gonna see me put some of the cracks, which are not really cracks, they're just the, it is just the defined defin, defined spot between the different bone structures of the face. You're gonna see me freehand some of them in. And it's important to note that, you know, of course, don't feel like you have to, you know, you can take and spray off the edge of a piece of paper and you'll see me do that up on the forehead a little bit so you, where you can just spray on the paper and let small amounts of paint come off for really small cracks but knowing that i'm going to do a lot of erasing with this painting i really wasn't too worried about it. if i made a mistake freehanding you know i can fix it but see as you can see there i'm going to just freehand those cracks in there and i didn't even draw them out I know them pretty well, and I can just look at my reference and know where they need to go. So, you know, doing it that way, it works out okay for me. Now, what I want to show you is, see, there's that piece of paper. I've laid it sideways, so I'm spraying on the piece of paper. It ricochets off and then sprays a very tight, sharp, crisp line on the surface. Now... As I continue to build this in, I'm, you can tell I'm not, I'm working a lot of my colors and I'm bringing in my shape without putting my textures in all in one shot because I know I'm going to work this quickly and I'm going to get it done quickly. If you let that paint set up a long time, it's going to be hard to erase off. Now here I came back in, I sprayed red very, very lightly over over the outer edge and I probably went too far with that. As a matter of fact, I know I went too far with that, but that's okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do is take my pencil eraser and, and work in like a figure eight kind of motion as I'm spraying small circles, little figure eights, and I'm going to pull almost all of that red back and you'll have just sections of it that sit back and that's going to create a lot of that texture that you see in the end result. Of course, my pencil eraser is going to make much crisper highlights. And again, what I'm doing is kind of tapping or making little circular motions or figure eights with the pencil eraser in a lot of these places so that it's a rough and bumpy surface with what it creates. And I'm not going to take you through all of the erasing section, but again, I erase that back out. And this is what you're going to come up with. So I've pulled most of that red out. Now I've come back and I've mixed up that darkest tone, that same orange and black mix, and I'm going to reinforce my darkest sections and come back in and do my blending and shading in there. We're going to put a few more textures, little dots and stuff like that, and make sure that we get our crisp edges where we need them. And again, it is a question of building those layers, which is giving me all of this dimension and gives us that nice depth and we got that really nice warm feel about this painting that undertone that we created there being in that orangish family and orange tone it has a lot to do with the warmth that we have in this painting we could have done that with a more of a gray color and it would have come out a little bit darker and then we could have even if we laid with sepia tones on top of the gray it would have been still a much cooler look about it anyway this is starting to get pretty long-winded now Okay guys, that's gonna be a wrap. I do have a long form version of this video that I'm gonna probably put out into a private channel later because I can't really, you know, long form videos really just don't do really well in the normal YouTube context. But uh, if that's something you're interested in, let me know. I'm gonna have some more long form content, maybe looking at getting memberships as I get back into making regular content again. So, yeah, if there's something you guys want to know about that we use today, I'll have links for the materials and the tools that I use today. Well, I mean, I didn't use a whole lot. But, uh, yeah, hopefully you got something out of this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be a wrap. I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. Y'all have a great day.